Welcome back to On Right Podcast. Uh, you have Elijah here alongside Grant. Uh, you know, we're going to hop right into it. March Madness, uh, you know, go blue. See Grant over there rocking amazing blue. We're into the Sweet 16. Uh, you know, we said that was, you know, the first major hurt major hurdle uh, milestone that we wanted to reach uh, in order to call this a, you know, a successful year. But now that we're here, I know I'm kind of hungry for more. I would love to see him put it together again. Uh, yeah. I kind of want to see your, your thoughts on this. Um, you know, what, how the team has pulled together. Uh, yeah. Got J- Juwan back running the show. Just kind of, you know, what's your thoughts on everything um, now that we're, you know, the first weekend of March Madness is over? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, I definitely was pretty, uh, you know, pretty concerned after they blew that 17 point lead to Indiana in the Big Ten Championship, you know, as far as how they was going to respond. And they, and they responded by, you know, starting down 15 points to Colorado State <laughs> in the first round. Um, but no, I, I'm just impressed as far as like how, you know, Frank, Frankie Collins, I mean, I'm pretty sure he had like not even like the 24 hours notice before he kind of realized he was going to be starting the next game. He, he's a gamer. Yeah, and I think he's definitely gonna be one of them guys where he's gonna be like add on that list of like great point guards Michigan's had like the last like 10, 10, 15 years. Um, and I like, yeah, I just feel like he comes in super aggressive, you know, um, run and just runs the show like very comfortably. Like he just feels, you know, it just felt like he's done it before. And on top of that, he didn't even play um, basketball last year in, like in high school because uh, wherever he was at, they um, didn't have a season. Um, so yeah, for him to kind of come in and be able to um, take over the way he did really impressed me. But I just I'm laughing because I, I was looking at the text. I was sent you the text message where I said like we can beat Tennessee, but then I two seconds later I was like I was just like let me shut up because like you know like and you said too like we can beat everybody, we can lose anybody. Um, so I just love they responded against Colorado State. You know, obviously they're the bigger team, stronger team, more physical team in that sense. And then um, yeah, you know. Tennessee, they took a couple haymakers. You know, it was pretty close all game. Um, but I just love like how Juwan, you know, made adjustments on the fly. You know, and this is with, I mean, pretty much like Devontae Jones came in and was struggling, and they had to kind of pull him. And you know, you make a game plan expecting the player to be there, and you have to just kind of d- double back and like you know make adjustments after that player's you know basically ruled out, or you you know we kind of saw like how you know he was kind of out of it and not really ready to play. Um, and yeah, I mean, everything from Hunter Dickinson, just you know, taking over Eli Brooks, you know, just kind of like, yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm just glad, yeah, I'm just glad that like, to see the ball in his hands more, kind of like in crunch time and, you know, kind of been critical of him just cause he's a fifth year guy, oldest guy on the team, probably, you know, it's kind of inconsistent throughout the year, but I was glad to see that he's playing like the best ball, um, you know, probably of his career right now. Um, it matters the most. Yeah, yeah, and I think the most impressive thing about the win on uh, on Saturday was that they were down like seven or eight with like nine uh, uh, nine minutes left. I think they held. Not only did they go on like an amazing run to come back and win, obviously, but they held Tennessee to like ten points in like like seven or eight minutes of like in, like game time. So you know, I mean, they're playing hard. Uh, I think they kind of rallied around Juwan Howard. You know, you kind of just, like I said, a lot of uh, outside noise. You know, I think they kind of rallied around that. And, yeah, just very, very impressive. I'm, I'm like how you are. I mean, I think we, um, you know, definitely have a shot, you know, more of a shot that people are giving us credit for or think we have uh, tomorrow playing Villanova. So it'll be, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, no, I um, I second a lot of things you said. You know, it's uh, it's really the roller coaster of our season. You know, we started the season, what, top five, definitely top ten in the country. Yep. Uh, you know, came out to be really stumbling right from rip. Um, and it's one of those things where I was like, oh, you know, I had an excuse for us the entire time. Uh, you know, we, we were young. Uh, we needed to figure it out. Our point guard was new. Uh, you know, <laughs> we just can't shoot. You know, whatever the case is. But, you know, we're we finding ways to grind it out and, and um, have had some a lot of impressive victories over the last six weeks. We've had a yeah. lot of bad losses, too. You know, lost some leads, whatever. We've, we've, but we've had some – Put together some very nice victories against uh, quality opponents, uh, even opponents within the Big Ten, um, as well as some that I uh, with throughout this tournament. That, that Tennessee team was a good team, uh, mm-hmm. even the Colorado State team. They, they look they look pretty formidable as well. They would have beat a lot of teams. Uh, so I, I don't think we you know we've gotten um, 
sleep, uh, uh, like a sleepy schedule throughout. You know, we've gotten some teams that, that had firepower as well, but we found ways to overcome. Um, I think we, we, we obviously have to feed the ball to Dickinson. That is, um, you know, our main course, one of our bread and butters, but also we need to take the time to open it up more, uh, run when we have the opportunity. Uh, yeah. play, you know, let, let some of our um, athletes be athletes against some of these other teams. Uh, you yeah. know, whether that's uh, Caleb Houston, just let him get a little loose on a one-on-one, trying to find a way to get him to jumpstart him getting going. Uh, yeah. He's been a player that, that throughout the last two weeks or week, in, you know, I would say since the Big Ten tournament has kind of struggled. A uh, player that if we can get him turned on at the right time or if he can step up this upcoming game, then that's the additional firepower that we need uh, uh, to get past Villanova, who I did watch. And obviously they have a great program there too. Um, you know, we, lo- we lost to them in the championship game in like what, 2018, 2019. Uh, you know, they're in it. They're in the mix every year as well. Um, they have a great program. Uh, yeah. So, so obviously they're going to be a tough out as well. But I do, I think you know, with Dickinson, one of the best big men in the country, one of the best versatile big men in the country, you know, one of the few guys that has some of the best size uh, in the country uh, and, but also can move, you know, he's not a big, um, a big slouch, like the Purdue guy or, or um, uh, Cockburn or Coburn, whatever, you know, he's, he's not one of them type of guys. He's pretty, he's pretty light on his feet, can hit some jumpers. So I think uh, with him, and with the rest of our pieces that we have, uh, it, we just have to play our cards right again. And I think we can we can beat this team. I really do think that. Uh, yep. you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, across the board, there's lots of great games this weekend. Uh, yeah. You know, I think I think we are we're on Thursday, I believe. So uh, tomorrow, same this weekend is tomorrow. Um, yeah. And yeah, so uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think we I think what I was gonna say I think we tip off for the we're the we are the first game. Uh, mm-hmm. but, but if not, we're definitely on Thursday. And, um, yeah, I just look forward to it. Look forward to a great weekend of basketball. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're sitting here um, sharing, you know, having a, yeah. a, a phenomenal run continuing. Right. Yeah, and I, and I, and I just want to add, too, like, uh, Caleb Houston, had, he had zero points on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think, yeah, that's – And so, then, uh, uh, coming off a string of other, you know, rocket right. games. So, you and know, this is be a time for him to – yeah, yeah, it's just crazy, man. I'm still just kind of like just you know, I mean, it's probably like one of the like the best worst Michigan team. <laughs> like, I, I think we, you know what I'm saying? Like, to where like you watch them because I mean, they just have their turnovers. You know, Diabate was missing miss a couple bunnies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, I mean, obviously, it's like a part of the game, but it's it's just crazy to where you know everybody's looking at us as like this team that limped into the tournament, which we did. You know probably shouldn't be there, probably should be in the NIT instead. And then to just have like that, you know, obviously it comes down to playing who's in front of you and they, you know, do what they had to do to get to where they're at. Um, and still just the fact that like, like the inconsistency, you can still see it. It's still there. You know, obviously they're, you know, cleaning some things up, but I think they'll just continue to do so as, you know, as stuff goes on, as the attorney goes on and if they're able to, you know, keep advancing. But man, I'm, you know, I still don't think, like, I just hope that, you know, we kind of can have, you know, put together, like, one of them, like, you know, Purdue at home type games or, like, Michigan State at home type games where we can just really beat down on somebody how we're, like, we're, like, we're, like we're capable of doing. Yes. Um, you know, like, they just can't afford to start slow um, against how they did against Colorado State. Um, and, you know, when it comes to you – know, when they played against Tennessee, I just felt like they had a lot of issues with, like, turnovers. Yeah. Um, and just, you know – playing the greatest defense to kind of start things off. So you got to come out the gate because, like you said, yeah, they're over a great team. Uh, they got, you know, Colin Gillespie, pretty much kind of the same uh, situation as uh, Brooks, just like super senior, you know, seeing everything, done everything. If I'm not mistaken, uh, yeah, he's, I think he was definitely one of those championship teams. Um, I think he played a little bit yeah. like a freshman on that team. I yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think he was a freshman on that team, um, the team that won it all uh, not too long ago. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, you know, hopefully they, you know, go out here and at, at worst just compete, not lay an egg. And uh, I think we definitely, you know, definitely, definitely think we have the opportunity to, um, you know, knock another team off and potentially get to the Elite Eight. So. We can get on to the rest of the games. I kind of have a question, an odd question. Who does uh, Frankie Collins remind you of? I was, and I'm just going to throw out my, my pick from here, uh, is Rockman. Um, I kind of feel like 
Oh, Abdul Rockman? Oh. Yeah, I kind of – that – I I don't know. I just kind of – I feel like yeah. I get flashes of him just kind of quick and get to the lane. Uh, not a bad jumper, but more so wanted to get to the basket. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of – is that's kind of what I see as far as it, once he gets handed the show, um, what it might look like. Are we looking for like like a Michigan comparison or just kind of? I don't know. This was throwing out. Well, that's what I thought of when I seen it the other day. But okay, yeah. Um, I don't. Hmm. I don't know, man. Honestly, I kind of get. That's a tough one. You really put me on the spot with this one. No, you don't got to do it. I just was thinking about it the other day, Darren. Yeah, I just want to take yeah, – try to see if I can come up with somebody for a couple of seconds. I mean, because I would say just from, like, a Michigan standpoint, I mean, he does kind of remind me of, like, Trey Burke. I mean, how kind of like how Trey Burke kind of came in, just looked, like, super ready to play. You know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, just kind of like an immediate, immediate impact, except Collins didn't get the immediate impact because he was, you know, kind of having to sit and wait his turn because Jones came in, you know, the transfer and everything. And, you know, kind of just kind of took the reins from there. and. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I definitely see uh, a little bit of, like, Trey Burke in him. Kind of I – mean, even, too, not from, like, a defensive standpoint, but just uh, the guy from Baylor last year, Davion Mitchell. Okay. Smaller guy, you know, can get to the basket, you know, pretty easily. Just – I just look at Collins kind of just being, like, just, like, tenacious. You know what I'm saying? Just – like, he come, I don't know. I, I'm just impressed with him as a freshman, how he's just kind of come in and – Yeah, thrown into the fire. Not even, yeah, like, I don't – I, mean, I don't really see him, you know, turn over the ball that much. You know what I mean? Like he's just so in control, you know, to really just be kind of playing. Like I, I don't, it wasn't really, he wasn't really playing a ton to kind of start the year off either. So um, he's definitely stepped up in the perfect time, though. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, just to kind of swing it out, uh, open it up. Uh, you know, uh, one of the, I guess, the more formidable teams, probably the team that everybody's betting favorite to win this all be Gonzaga. They're freshman led. Uh, yeah, uh, Holcomb. You know, I guess kind of, what are your thoughts on what they did? Um, you know what what they look like. Uh, how do you, how do you feel about them? Or you know, I guess yeah. we'll open it up. Who's your who do you think is the favorite outside of? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm probably the biggest Gonzaga hater. Like I was uh, I was telling a lot of people last weekend how I just you know I, one, one thing I've always kind of been curious with about them is like how did they how did they get to where they are now? You know what I'm saying? So like you know when I, when I say that it's you know, kind of like in that, like, D1, like, not like a mid-major, but they're kind of – I mean, I feel like they kind of do play like a somewhat of a mid-major conference. Like, mm-hmm. they're not really playing – you know, I think the only other person that – only the team, excuse me, that gets in, you know, the tournament besides them out of that conference ends up being like St. Mary's. Right. And they got – you know, they came in and beat Indiana pretty handedly and then, um, you know, got blown out by UCLA the next – you know, the next game. Um, and that – and it's like a loss to that, you know, loss to that team. So, um, I, for them, I just, I'm just I'm, I guess I'm just not going to be really impressed until they join a pack, join the Pac-12. Um, when, you know, so that's just kind of like my two cents on them. No, you know um, I'm thinking all of that. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I just think overall, man, I mean, I'm, I think I'm going to stick to my, uh, my bracket. I picked Arizona. They had a little bit of a scare. And I was going, and this is also a point I was going to make. I feel like this is one like the, uh, most competitive tournaments I've seen, I feel. Not a ton of blowouts, you know, first round. Lots and of then, money, lots of uh, – Yeah, really and watching like that – yeah, watching that like that TCU-Arizona game, like, I'd say the Big 12, they're, you know, they're pretty formidable, pretty good, um, you know, basketball conference. Uh, Pac-12, you know, they're like up and down most year. They're top-heavy. They're very, very yeah, top-heavy. Right. But, like, I don't know if you watched that game. That was like the last one of the weekend, like that Sunday night game. But that one was just like – so intense and you know sometimes people look at that kind of game and be like oh well you know they couldn't they could barely beat a nine seed but I looked at it as like you know that's just level of play in this tournament and some I also kind of feel like some teams weren't seated maybe as correctly as they should have been I mean the way North Carolina like was beaten down on Baylor on Baylor we all know if that dude Manic didn't get ejected they probably would have ended up beating them by like 20 25. I was, I was shocked by that to be honest. Um, yeah that yeah, yeah. No, I agree, I agree. That just yep. shows, like you said, the power of conferences. They sometimes they they're diluted. No, and I, I second a lot of stuff you're saying about Gonzaga. Um, uh, for me, I just want to see, in particular, the things I'm watching for is see if if the Holgram in particular can can do that type of stuff versus uh, more competitive competition. Yeah. Uh, um, they got Texas Tech, right? Um, uh, Gonzaga. They play Arkansas. Arkansas. I'm, I'm tripping. Ar- yeah. Um, yeah. So I, you know. Uh, want to see what they can do versus them versus them boys. I want to see, you know, what, what it looks like as a whole. Um, 
And you asked where they came from, and I guess uh, just the, the earliest memory I have of them would be like Adam Morrison. You know, mm-hmm. I, obviously they had a program prior to that, but um, that's the first time I remember them being like somewhat formidable, being hyped up. He was led the country in scoring, or maybe was second to JJ Reddick, but he was right in the mix. Yeah. Um, him crying on the floor in the Sweet 16. You know, I think yeah. that, that's the first memory I really have of them. And then since then, they've just kind of slowly eased and dripped into um, mainstream. And right. I personally do think, and they're um, they're kind of taking like the Duke mantle. Um, that's kind of their, I feel like their claim to fame. You know, the uh, the Timmy guy reminds me of some old Duke player. You know, that reminds me of uh, got a lot of Leitner in them. <laughs> yeah, you know, just those type of guys that you know um, you absolutely hate them if they're not on your team. Um, right. And they're the media darlings. So mm-hmm. obviously Holgram's probably a one and done. They're starting to get those type of mix um, last year with Jalen Suggs. Um, yeah. But I think that's kind of the ilk that they're going for, if you know what I'm saying. So yep. I and I think they wouldn't get they wouldn't give that type of praise to or benefits to a lot of teams playing that week of a schedule. And you know, uh, right? You know, I think about it like this: drop, like you drop a Michigan in that conference, yeah, we'll probably r- rattle off 25 wins too. You yeah, know, drop uh, any of the big boys from, uh, from Big Ten, Mi- Michigan State, right. Wisconsin, Purdue, they all rack up close to 25, 30 wins. So. Yeah, I did. some people, some people will try to like argue that and be like, well, you know, cause they, I mean, they did. They, I think they lost to Duke. They ended up beating Texas Tech and UCLA. But this was like in November. You know, what I'm saying like a lot of teams, like teams don't even know who they are quite yet. Yep. You know, and I, and it's always going to hit different when you're playing that type of schedule. But then you got to go into the Big Twelve and play a Big Twelve schedule. You got to play a Big Ten schedule or like a you know, Pac-12, ACC type schedule. I mean, we've seen so many times how many, like, I think one time, like, one year, like, Michigan, they started off, like, what, like, 17-0? and 0, And then you kind of run through that buzzsaw to where it kind of, you know, like the gauntlet, you know, getting to that, like, real heavy conference play to where, you know, you go from being 17-0 and 0 to, like, you know, 20-5, and 5, or you know what I'm saying, to where I feel like they're not really getting tested like that. And, and I think my biggest issue with it is that, you know, we watch, like, you know, Baylor do what they, you know, Baylor, great team playing in the past, yeah, you know, Big 12. Yeah, you know, Kansas, and you had all these other, you know, teams that, you know, Arizona. But then, like, when you give a team like a Zag number one overall seed, they're basically playing, like, the worst team in the in the uh, whole tournament, like, the first weekend. You know what I'm saying? So I just think, like, like they obviously will get, like, somewhat of the easiest path to yeah, kind of well, get Well, let's, let's pose the question this. Obviously, we're just throwing it out there, but um, we've seen how hot that North Carolina team is. What if they would have had to play North Carolina the second round, you know? Uh, yeah, they they might be sitting at home right now. Yeah, because I would say you know that's a big difference between playing Memphis, um, you know, not as established program. Uh, you know, probably not. And he's still trying to figure it out. Yeah, still trying to figure it out. Their best, one of their best players is seventeen. He's not even playing. You know, he's yep. you know, and all. That's a major difference between uh, North Carolina powerhouse, uh, who's who would love to knock off a number one seed, uh, just because they're mad they're at eight. You know, so yeah. I, um, that's two major different, two major different uh, uh, competition there, and they might be sitting at home right now. Very so, you know. So I, yeah. it's just a major. Uh, yeah, and I even think too, like, and yeah, I mean, they, you know, they they do their thing, but I was talking to you know people this past weekend. I'm just kind of like, we kind of decided to ask each other. We, we, we somebody asked a question like, uh, you know, you know, how many times they made it to like the national championship or just even like the elite eight. And I think they've made a national the championship like twice in, since like 99. And then they've been bouncing to Sweet 16 probably like seven or eight different times or like second round, you know, a good amount of times. Like, it's like they're getting the easiest road in most situations. and They're still kind of struggling to, you know, kind of have that down. And I know it's a tournament, you know what I'm saying? Like things happen, you know, it's obvious when them things win or go home, you come out having a bad night, you're probably going to end up going home. I, I completely understand all that type of stuff. I just, I don't see how they kind of get, the, you know, how they kind of end up getting that type of seed and not even playing anywhere near, you know, a conference uh, schedule that all the other teams that are one seeds end up having to play. So I guess that's just kind of uh, where I'm at on it. But, that, hey, they, they play Arkansas. Arkansas is a really good SEC team. They come out and blow them out by 2025 or, you know, like dominate them. Might kind of shut them up a little bit. Probably won't. But, you know. I guess at this point, it's like prove me wrong and win it all. And, you know, but I still won't really – I still feel like they just need to go ahead and, and join uh, Pac-12. And I think for their, for their recruiting standpoint, 
You know what I'm saying? Like it's it, it, it's different when you're going into a kid's room or you know house with their parents and you're telling them, hey, yeah, you could be playing like U USC, UCLA back to back nights, or you know we're gonna be playing in Arizona. Like a, you know, mm -hmm. we're we're trying to kind of be one of them blue bloods of the West Coast, like some of these schools are already. Instead of just like, oh yeah, you might play against you know St. Mary's in this little ass gym. Yeah, you know, like a, TV. Yeah, like it's you know, night basically. Yeah. Right. So I just think that I mean, obviously. They, you know, top dog in their conference, probably getting a whole a load of money, you know, just bringing it in anyways because they are a top dog in their conference. But I feel like it couldn't do anything but help them from a, uh, um, you know, just coming one of those, like like you said, maybe like the next Duke, if they were to join the Pac-12 and start maybe, maybe dominating the Pac-12. Yeah. If they are, you know what I'm saying? So it's opportunity out there. You know, that's how I look at it for them. It's just opportunity to try to, you know, get to that next level. No, I agree. Is uh, any other teams, uh, you know, so you said you picked Arizona? Um, yeah, you're riding with them. Yeah, I think them. I mean, I um, Kansas. I'm not. You know, they've kind of been pretty inconsistent in the tournament. I, that's more just on Bill Self. And then you know, obviously not really. You know, having his team ready to play. Right. Um, I do. I like how Arkansas. I mean, I like I like how they. You know, they play pretty good defense. Um, Texas Tech. Yeah. Um, they got Duke. I. I yeah. I expect them to. You know. I, really, I think that's going to be a great game. I really yeah. do. I think that's going to be – I um, I, I think uh, Pench, Bonchero, um, I just think he's uh, – his game is – Van Carroll. <laughs> Bonchero, what is it? Called a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Called a <laughs> Panchero. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I uh, – no. Nah. So, I just think he – looking at his game, his game is very well-rounded. Kind of like – I would say he's very skilled. You know, kind of – obviously, he's bigger. But, like, I would say like a Jason Tatum type of skill where he – he knows how, where to situate right. himself on the in the on the court. How to use his body as leverage. I was watching um, yeah. that between that and highlights. Um, he, he's very impressive. So yeah. um, I'm leaning towards the Pistons. Maybe if he's available too, just as a side note. But um, I think they're going to be a tough out. Obviously, Duke always is. But no, I, I um, watch that Texas Tech team. I mean, they're they're playing physical. Good there. Yeah, they're physical. Uh, you know, I remember Michigan ran into them a couple years ago. They were extremely tough. Uh, like yeah. they play like a form of bully ball, you know, they play. Uh, so I, I don't know what they're doing up there in Lebanon, but it's, uh, it's working. So, you know, I think, yeah, and they just lost their game. coach to Texas. They lost their coach to Texas, basically had to like get mm -hmm. all these like transfers come in and everything. And yeah, I mean, where it was able to squeeze out being a three seed or a four seed, um, you know, that next year. And yeah, it ended up like beating Texas, beating their former coach, beat yeah. Texas, you know, sweeping up during the regular season. And, yeah, so I, I'm I'm very impressed with them too. But yeah, all in all, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be some uh, really good ball. Um, and one thing I kind of just want to circle back to that we didn't get a chance to cover. I'm um, just going going to Michigan was um, you know, just how do you how how to make you feel to kind of see the Fab Five, you know, you know supporting Juwan. I watched an interview this week, uh, Rich Eisen with uh, Chris Weber. Sounds like Chris might be kind of trying to like you know work his way back. Right. Um, yeah. You know, on campus and stuff, and just trying to be more involved. I mean, I can't, I can't think of anything, but it, you know, just kind of just helping us out from like a recruiting standpoint. You know, if we can kind of find a way to have these guys around the team, and you know, I mean, I'd say have Chris Weber call the best power forward in the country, or have Jalen Rose reaching out to the best wing in the country. You know, coming out of high school. Um, what are your thoughts on just like? you know, what Jawan Howard is kind of starting to build his legacy and how, you know, you know, how you think it can be like kind of going forward. Yeah, so uh, I, I think it's amazing to see them around. As a person who's, you know, grew up watching Michigan basketball my whole life, that's always kind of been a thorn is that just how sour that relationship was between the university and members of the Fab Five. And, yeah. Um, in particular of that Chris Weber. You yep. know, Weber felt like he was kind of – just shunned, kicked out of the, the, the team, or not the team, but, you know, kicked out of, like, the, the fun party. He's not in anymore. And I so, um, I don't even think he – I think he was the only one that didn't show up in 2013 with Trey Burke in the championship. I don't think he was at that game. I think, you know, Jimmy King did, uh, Ray Jackson. Uh, obviously, Jimmy Rose always carried the Michigan flag. And I think yep. he's the one guy that did. So, um, you know, just to, for that to become full circle, seeing the video of him in the locker room, where, you know, he's uh, – his voice is hazy or raspy, and he's, you know, he's been excited. You know, he, he's probably the first Michigan game. I don't know this for sure. Probably the first Michigan game he's been to in a while. Um, and so you could tell that he got back into it quickly, and it is mm -hmm. good. It's only going to help when he is on 
he on TNT? He's on. Uh, I don't think he would TNT anymore, but yeah, but but he's uh, he's doing games probably weekly um, on national television. Jalen Rose has five shows on ESPN. He's on there all day. Uh, yeah. You know, so I think it's only going to help uh, the brand, the image, the the accessibility, just all of that, and especially where we're headed in basketball now, that's what it's all about um, mm-hmm. uh, with these brand deals. And if you can uh, know that you're going to be embraced by a major network uh, of successful people and what yeah. it comes with outside of me, I might not make it to the NBA, but I know that I could call Chris Weber and maybe get an internship here, or I could mm-hmm. call Jalen Rose and maybe get this, or, you know, or I, Hey, I have, 10 years after basketball and I have a documentary coming out, I know I can call Jalen and he's going to let me pub that on his show for 10 minutes or five minutes. Yep. So those are the type of things that I think um, that you need to embrace. And that's something that Juwan Howard has done and, and, uh, or, or fostered, I should say within the program. And also for him to come in so hot, you know, his first year um, COVID year. So that didn't count as far as tournament, but I do think we were getting hot at the right time his first year. Um, yep. That second year, uh, we lost in the lead eight. We lost Livers the week before the tournament started. Best player probably would have been in the final four, bare minimum, uh, yeah. if we had him. Yeah. Uh, um, and then this year, Sweet 16, uh, obviously we, we started, expectations started out here, but if you would have polled us in mid-February and asked we're beating Sweet 16, we probably would have both said no. So, yeah. you know, I think uh, all together, he's pulled together and harmed us to great season. So I just think uh, we have a lot to look forward to. I was even looking at recruiting – um, there's a lot to be excited about within that as well. Um, yeah. uh, we might have one of the bowl brothers on our team, <laughs> um, the youngest one. So, uh, we're in his top three, uh, he's like 2024. 20, and that was something I was like, man, you know, we're one of those things where, um, I can see he's in uh, a bowl. His name is John Bowl. Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, he's, like, he's like the 27th ranked player in his class, number like two center. Okay. Yeah, just I can see his vision. You're probably going to keep a a solid athletic big man. Uh, We're going to keep uh, athletes around them, and Mm -hmm. hopefully we get some shooting down a little better. But I can definitely see the vision of what we have here, and, uh, you know, it's nothing but uh, excitement for me as far as where we are and where we're headed. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, we'll be wrapping up with this. But, yeah, if you, you know, you just hit on the head, I mean, if you would have asked us, we'd be in a Sweet 16, you know, a month and a half ago, definitely would have said definitely not. Probably would have thought it might have been an NIT. But, yeah, I mean, I'll take – regardless of what happens tomorrow, I mean, I'll take it as being, you know, quote, unquote, one of the best 16 teams in the country um, end of the season. So, I'm optimistic about uh, tomorrow night, and we'll yeah, we'll see what happens. You got anything else? That's all, man. Go Blue. Beat Nova. Go Blue. <laughs>